In this video, we'll calculate the pH of a buffer using an ice chart. This method will always work, but we'll see in a later video that there's actually a faster way we can do this. So we need a buffer, so we need a weak acid in a conjugate base, or a weak base in its conjugate acid, and we can use something like acetic acid, perhaps. So we can take a solution that is 0.1 molar in acetic acid, and maybe something that is also 0.1 molar in its conjugate base, acetate. And again, we can't just have acetate, we have to have a counter ion, so sodium acetate would be perfect. So the sodium ion is neutral, we can pretty much just ignore it from this point on. We're going to go ahead and we're going to write out the reaction. So we've got to find the pH, so presumably we're working with either an acid or a base. So we can write a Ka or a Kb reaction. And I would say, since we're working with pH, we probably want to find the H plus concentration. So a Ka reaction is probably the most efficient way to do it. But completely up to you, whatever floats your boat. So the Ka reaction, so our acid is acetic acid, so H-C2H3O2. And what makes it an acid is that it can throw a proton at something like water. In the K reaction, it has to be water, and it's going to protonate water and turn it into the hydronium. And what's left behind is the acetate ion. Okay, we can fill out our ice chart, initial change equilibrium. We initially have a solution that's 0.1 molar in acetic acid, and it's actually 0.1 molar in acetate. Okay, water, oh, what did I write there? Aqueous water, that's silly, that should be a liquid, so we ignore that. And the hydronium ion concentration was 10 to the minus seven moles per liter in room temperature water. We'll go ahead and approximate that as being zero. So since we've got zero hydronium on the right, we know it has to shift from left to right, so we have to make some of that H3O plus, so it's gonna go minus X plus X plus X. And then at equilibrium, if we leave off the units, it'll be 0.1 minus X, X, and 0.1 plus X. All right, so Ka for acetic acid. Well, we have to look that up, and I can look that up. It is 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. And so that's equal to the concentration of products divided by reactants. And again, water is a pure liquid, so we leave it out of the expression, or if you like, it has an effective concentration of one. And if you look at that, you say, well, that's a quadratic equation. Do I really need to do that? Well, we can go ahead and we make an assumption. If X is a lot smaller than 0.1, then if we add it or subtract it away from 0.1, that doesn't change it at all. So we can say that's approximately equal to X times by 0.1. If we add a small number to 0.1, it's still gonna be 0.1. And if we take away a small number from 0.1, we can see it's still gonna be 0.1. And aha, so our 0.1 over 0.1 is just one. So Ka is equal to X. So you might remember seeing something like this in the polyprotic acid video. So immediately we get the value of X and that is equal to the concentration of hydronium. And we want to find the pH. So the pH is the negative log of that value. And if we take the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus five, um, we get the pH of our buffer. And I get that to be 4.8. Seven, four. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. We probably should double check our guess that X is much smaller than 0.1. So if X ends up being 1.8 times 10 to the minus five, that is much, much smaller than 0.1. So it's much less than 5%. And we can calculate the percentage and it's like, you know, a fraction of a percent. So we're probably safe just there. So remember also the number of significant figures when we take the logarithm turns into the number of decimal places. So we really can't write our pH out past the second decimal place. And most pH meters in the lab, they don't really read reliably to the second decimal place, or sorry, any further than the second decimal place. So we often rind it to the second decimal place, even if we calculate more, just because it's very hard to measure past this point in the lab. All right, that was it doing a nice chart, and that method will always work. But we'll see in the next video, there's actually a much faster way to do it. So stay tuned.